to the steps. So what are we doing? So it's rained a lot on our property and rainwater is really good for gardens and it's free. So we have a ton of buckets and all sorts of tubs lying around the property that we collect water in. And I am Even though you're not supposed to? Yeah. What? Even though we're not supposed to, I am collecting rainwater and taking it down to the blue barrels for my corn plot. And this is a, an example of where the mud is horrible. The baby actually just got stuck in it. So we have two 55 gallon barrels down here and I am filling them with rainwater so that way when it comes time to irrigate my corn plot, we have a little bit of water already. Uh, so I'm just using a funnel and a bucket and together these two barrels make 110 gallons of water for my corn pot that I didn't have to pay for. Out here in Ashwork, we have to haul all of our water pretty much or you can get it delivered but either way the water doesn't just come out of the tap, it doesn't just come from the city, we have to have it brought out to our property. So every little bit of rainwater is a blessing that we truly need every year. So next we're going to check on the chicken eggs and then I think we're going to call it a day until we update on the babies inside. All right, go get So which one is this? This is the lower chicken pen. No, baby. This pen has more juice. Stop it. All right, so we're down in the lower chicken pen right now. In this pen, I have my two red, blue, or blue, red lace blind dot females. My male blue silky and my male sizzle silky frizzle mix. And I'm going to be checking for eggs. I haven't decided if I'm going to keep the eggs from today to check for fertilization because it has only been about three days and I'm not quite sure if the boys are doing their job. So I haven't decided whether or not we're going to keep their eggs for incubation or if we're going to keep them for eating. Let's see what we got. Okay, so we did get two eggs. So both girls laid an egg today. And I'm using a different bucket from when I was saving rainwater because you don't want to let your eggs get wet. You want to keep that protective membrane around the egg that it's, it's uh, laid with. Once you wash it or get it wet, you wash away that protective membrane and bacteria can get into your eggs. That's why farm eggs are a lot better than store-bought eggs because the store-bought eggs have been washed and they're open to bacteria like salmonella. So let's go check up in mom's coop and see how many eggs the girls have laid up there. All right, so over here we've got uh, speckled Sussex and two guard rocks. This right here was a compost pile bin. I don't remember exactly what mom called it, but basically we had it set up in layers of organic material. So there's newspaper in there, there's cardboard, there's weeds, there's, you know, compost, there's all sorts of stuff in there, eggshells, uh, old veggies that went bad, all sorts of stuff that can be broken down and turned into this amazing black dirt right here. This is exactly what you want when you start a compost pile. It's gonna look like this stuff to begin with, but then as it breaks down and incorporates, you have this amazing mulch that continues to decompose. See, there's an eggshell right there. There's coffee grounds, all sorts of stuff in this. So let's go check up at the coop and see how many of these girls laid an egg. All right, so if you can hear me over the dog, we're heading into the larger coop right now. This teardrop coop is consistent of two runs. There's the main chicken run where the flock right now all reside. We've got three garden beds in here that we'll be doing videos on as the season progresses. Uh, right here is the largest chicken coop. I'm going to check for eggs real quick. All right. 
right, so today these upper girls laid five eggs. They're various sizes, texture, or not textures, but colors and shades of tan because we have different varieties of chickens. Over here is the second run. Now the second run we use when we want to separate the, some of the chickens, but we want them outside. So <coughs> when we're first integrating young chicks or ducklings into the flock, we tend to put them on this side so they can accl acclimate to the weather out here. They stay in the little one. When they're really smaller chicks, we do have a heat lamp out here at night. Um, make sure that you have your cord and your bulb in an area where it can't cause any fire hazards. And uh, there's two gates to this one. There's this gate right here, over here, that blocks this section off alone. Then when you open up the gate, there's another section back here, and there's another piece of fencing right there. So they have this entire area if we choose to let them out. That's where we usually keep new ducks, new chicks. Um, if any of the chickens seem to be looking sick, that's where we would keep them. And uh, that's kind of like our nursery run. So when the ducklings and the turkey chicks are ready to go outside to begin with, we're gonna be putting them over here until we get their own residence set up. We're gonna be doing a duck area so that way we can have a larger flock. And we're also gonna be doing a turkey area because turkeys can be aggressive. So we'll give you updates on that. But for right now, our total is two, Seven chicken eggs and no duck eggs today. So that's March 11th, 2020, 2020. I don't think there's anything else out here that we need an update on. We did saving water, rainwater, and a little update on our chicken coops. So stay tuned. <laughs> 